and it's been a while since we've done a cosmology segment, so let's do one. We're streaming it live to Twitch to start things out. By the way, twitch.tv slash smashamash is our URL. Twitch is a fantastic live streaming platform. We use it the most for live streams. We do also stream live to YouTube, thanks to our subscribers over there. As we approach the 2,000 subscribers mark, frankly, we never expected to reach 200 subscribers. So thanks to everybody who has tuned in. Again, please press share, subscribe, like, leave a comment, etc. Tell your friends and foes about the channel. And thanks to all of our subscribers over there. Thanks most of all to our patrons. Patreon.com slash Smashamash is our URL there. Our patrons are listed in order of lifetime contribution. So thanks everybody who stepped up, supported the channel since we're paid almost nothing on YouTube. Thanks to our patrons who've stepped up and decided to help fund us, increasing the probability that these videos will continue to exist and remain publicly visible. Consider becoming a patron at Patreon.com slash Smashamash. We're also on BitChute. And we're also on Discord. So thanks for leaving a comment here, Atmanhotep from Spanaway, Washington, showing us a reading on his phone of 112 degrees. Yes, that counts as cosmology, I think. And I'm going to need control of my computer back. By the way, welcome everybody to the Neo Renaissance. Check out our own website, smashamash.org. Smashamash.org will redirect you to smashamash.com. Click our merch links, our forum, etc. One of our merch links is this one right here, the Smasho store, which still does include Smasher Price, My First Pandemic, the Mansa shirt, I Survived a Global Pandemic So Far, All Things Matter. Yes, it's all still there. Also, our Red Bubble Shop, which you can find right here, Smasho merch. And today's featured product is the My Vaccination Status is None of Your Business HIPAA Socks. And we've got some on the way, actually, that we'll be modeling for you soon. And before we continue on with the cosmology segment, let me check the life of the stream. The life of the stream here at the Smash News Network, least busted name in news, looks just fine. So let's get to the cosmology. First, cosmic ray flux. We're going to look at seven cosmic ray monitors, starting with Apatity. So this particular monitor is showing a small downward trend here over the past 30 days. And Barentsburg, the opposite. A small upward trend over the past 30 days at Barentsburg. Let's go farther south to Athens, Greece. And we are streaming live. Give it a moment to load here. Slight downward trend there at Athens, Greece. Let's go even farther south to Mexico City. There's the Mexico City Cosmic Ray Observatory downward trend there at Mexico City. And let's go back very far north to Olu, Finland. There's Olu pretty flat here over the past 30 days at Olu. And let's look at DOMB Antarctica. Downward trend there over the past 30 at DOMB. And here's DOMC. A similar slightly downward trend at those cosmic ray monitors. Continuing on, we're not picking anything random. We're giving you a quick look here at M1, otherwise known as the Crab Nebula. This is the Crab Nebula. The Crab Pulsar, really, is what we're centered on here. That is the Crab Nebula Pulsar in X-ray. So if you look at this in infrared, it looks completely differently. There are the X-ray emissions, and you can still sort of see the basic shape of the pulsar there. And let's take a look at it in infrared as well. There it is on the two mass, and you see more of an idea of the thermal emissions from this massive X-ray source. One of the most consistent and powerful X-ray sources in the sky is the Crab Pulsar. And again, there it is on the Chandra. Great imagery there of the jet out of the closer end of the Crab Pulsar. More on that in a moment. First, an article on SciTech Daily about stellar flares, 100,000 to 10 million times more energetic than the Carrington event. So the Carrington event of 1859 is the most famous solar storm producing event. And if it happened now, it would probably cost trillions of dollars because of how many transformers would be destroyed due to induced electricity from the incoming solar protons. So here's a study of some X-ray sources, Chandra's survey of more than 24,000 stars. 
where it picked up certain super flares. And when we say super flares, again, we're talking about flares that are like uh, 100,000 to 10 million times the power of the flare that produced the Carrington event. The most significant coronal mass ejection event. And it was powerful enough to spark auroras all the way down in the Caribbean. Yes, Habana, Cuba saw Aurora Borealis from the Carrington event. And it's part of the reason why we have a channel. We weren't expecting to be able to forecast coronal mass ejections. However, we do. So here we are. Here's NASA's astronomy picture of the day. This is another nebula. This is the Lagoon Nebula, which is full of X-ray producing stars. Great imagery there. It looks like composite imagery consisting of X-ray and probably infrared as well. Probably also visible light and maybe even UV. I'm not exactly sure. It doesn't tell us. But the Orion Nebula, known as M42, is quite a molecularly rich nebula. So perhaps go have a read about that if you like. It's pretty interesting. The Orion Nebula, located at only about 1,500 light years. And I just wanted to revisit this image real quick here. Uh, this partial solar eclipse image. I didn't mean to discount it yesterday. It's quite epic. And it may be obvious why the ancients freaked out when eclipses happened, as anything blotting out the sun like that is, well, kind of scary if you don't understand how it's working. You may not have been able to see the new moon. Next, another article here from SciTech Daily. A new type of stellar explosion which completely contradicts the concordance model of stellar evolution. So an electron capture super, supernova ignites a medieval mystery. How does it happen? Why do some supernovae look completely differently than other ones? If all stars go through the same sort of life cycle based on their mass, and at about 8 to 10 times the mass of the sun produce a black hole at the, quote, end of their lives, end quote, why are some completely different and outside of this model? Well, the answer is we don't know. This particular article is about supernova 2018 ZD. So this one's located at only about, I think, 30 million light years. And so it gave us a pretty good view here. Uh, this one happened in 1980. And anyway, this gives... Uh, this sort of gives the standard con concordance model of stellar evolution a run for its money once again, as we don't know how the neon, iron, magnesium, oxygen stars really do what they do. And I'm just letting the article scroll here. If you'd like to read it, feel free to pause the video. And there's the crab pulsar in a composite series of wavelengths. Hiramatsu added, it was such a eureka moment for all of us that we can contribute to closing the 40-year theoretical loop for me personally because my career in astronomy started when I looked at stunning pictures of the universe in the high school library, one of which was the iconic Crab Nebula. The term Rosetta Stone, which we use regularly on the channel, by the way, to describe the sun as the Rosetta Stone of cosmology. The Rosetta Stone is used too often as an analogy when we find a new astrophysical object said Andrew Howell, a staff scientist at Las Cumbres Observatory and adjunct faculty at US, UCSB. But in this case, I think it's fitting. This supernova is literally helping us decode thousand-year-old records from cultures all over the world. As when the Crab Nebula was formed, the pulsar was visible in the daytime. So anyway, that's today's cosmology segment. One more thing, our, our mission, since all your weather comes from space, our mission includes information about cosmology because we want to raise the awareness of the general public of the relationship between space weather and Earth effects. And I'll just let the rest of the list scroll here. I won't read it for you. You can go read it yourself at smashamash.com slash forum slash mission, smashamash.com slash forum slash mission. And part of our mission is greater understanding of cosmology. 
That's today's Cosmology segment. And thanks for tuning in, by the way, to Smash News Network, least busted name in news.